Disclosure, I was invited to the Panzer Museum Monster in 2023. Additionally, this video contains product placements. In this video, we take a look at the S-Tank or the Stritzwagen 103, as is the official name. Besides some basic information, we also take a look inside. Namely, a former Leopard 2 gunner will provide us with his first impressions. As such, he was not previously exposed to the vehicle itself. So that part will be less organized, but also mostly unfiltered information as well. Luckily, during the recording, we also ran into a former S-Tank platoon commander, and he let us know about fire tactics and organization, something we will also briefly cover. So some basic information first. The S-Tank served in the Swedish army from 1967 to 1979. It is quite a remarkable vehicle, since it was the first tank with a gun fixed in the hull. For this, it had a special suspension system to allow for a proper control of the elevation. It was armed with a long barreled version of the 105L7 gun, which was fed automatically from a magazine containing 50 rounds and ideally situated in the rear of the hull. The front of the hull housed a unique power plant consisting of a diesel engine and a gas turbine. This combination of a diesel engine and a gas turbine made the vehicle more complicated, but it had the following benefits. It was more fuel efficient, since the diesel engine was used as the main power source. The gas turbine was used only occasionally and had a small size. It was particularly useful in extreme cold weather. Both engines could drive the tank on its own as well. As such, the chances of being immobilized in combat or due to engine failure was reduced as well. It had a crew of three men, as you can see two were back to back, both of them had an identical set of integrated steering and suspension and gun control. This made either of the crewmen capable of fully operating the tank by himself, the first and still the only time that this could be done by one man in any tank. In terms of armor protection, it had a similar approach to the Israeli Makava tank, namely that parts were used to protect the crew. In the S-Tank, the engines and transmission are in the front of the crew. Additionally, it also had sloped armor as well. One major disadvantage with the S-Tank was that it could not engage targets during movement, unless they were directly in front of it. This was not a critical issue when tanks had to stop to fire accurately, because the S-Tank could stop and fire as quickly as other tanks. But when further development of stabilized gun controls made tanks capable of firing accurately on the move, the S-Tank became seriously handicapped by its inability to compete in this respect. Speaking of stabilized guns, currently I have a limited time off of my cat person t-shirts, particularly one with the Leopard 2E4 and other German tanks. If t-shirts are not your cup of tea, you might want to check out the books from our publishing house, the Military History Group. If you like well-researched books with footnotes, be sure to check out the links in the description. Hello everyone, we are today at the Panzer Museum Monster and I brought a Leopard 2 gunner who has been in various other tanks already. Which tanks do you have seen from the inside? Uh, T-72s. I was in T-72s, I was in T-55s. I was once in a T-34, 85. Obviously Leopard 2 and also Leopard 1 and uh, different versions of Leopard 2 as well. Okay, and today we'll put him into an S-Tank. He was not allowed to go on in before. So he will not go in, uh, get in and then I will film and interview him about his impressions of this tank or Sturmgeschütz, however you want to call it. Okay, then let's go in. So Tobias, how do you feel? Well, it's a complete different world compared to a Leopard and obviously a completely uh, different uh, situation to a Russian tank. It's interesting because uh, this vehicle, basically the driver, also aims the vehicle. But interestingly, what I saw that you have like a switchboard or an engine panel for the reverse driver, but uh, not for on the same size for the front. This uh, stuff looks extremely complicated with a lot of uh, levers and buttons on it to know. The hatch is rather large, right? Yeah, the hatch is large because two people are in it. But when I went in, I was like, uh, when getting down into this position that you don't have like a, a designated place where you can like grab to go down here. But uh, I think you're supposed to be like grab here and then go down here. I mean, then you have to align your 
head here. What I like uh, is that you have like uh, the normal periscope here with uh, a way bigger field of view, and then you have like this the normal view with a different kind of zoom option. Yeah. So you have six times, ten times, and eighteen times. Yes. And the, the above these binoculars, that's just a vision block. Yeah, it's just a vision block, I assume, for driving. Because... Um, yeah, you don't want to drive with the binoculars. Yeah, you won't see much when you're driving like this. But I think, at least for me, I have the feeling that you maybe have to use a helmet because my head is not fully at this rest and I don't see that you can like adjust this rest. And if you're not fully into it, I mean... Obviously, if I think about it, the S-Tank was only concepted uh, to fire from a standing position, so you don't use it. With the Leopard, it's like you have to press your head into it to avoid uh, that uh, while driving that you go bum, 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 it's, uh, yeah. that you're in it. So uh, it makes sense. It's a complete different uh, system. I mean, it's also a complete different time. But uh, what I'm missing here now is like uh, having some kind of a backup sight or night vision because you have only this... Uh, Two optics here for the main gun side. And and how is it is it is it comfortable from from the spacing like a leopard? Well, you said it's it's more cramped than a T seventy two. I would say it's on a similar level as the like T seventy two. But the question is, on Leopard two, you have the commander behind you, so this uh, seat is on the other way, and you have like the knees of the commander in your back all the time, especially when he's uh, bigger. And uh, that's not the case because the reverse driver, or I assume that this is the Ghana, that's the commander and this re reverse driver. Yeah, there's an, another with a similar uh, looking uh, dials. But uh, what's interestingly, because I understand uh, that this is supposed to be like uh, the Ghana is always uh, also the driver, that the full engine panel is in the rear and not in the front. That's uh, something I, I didn't expect of this vehicle. I mean, it's uh, clear that you have only like this uh, small steering wheel, but it's like a complete difference. I mean, I saw uh, NATO tanks, I saw uh, Warsaw Pack tanks, and it's like, uh, like I expected this, the Swedish went uh, kind of their own way in many things. So, okay, now we are inside. Say hello. Hello. And, yeah, this is the position of the commander over there. What's uh, interestingly that there's like this big open space like this void where you can look into the vehicle that you don't have like a closed uh, combat compartment like this uh, giant holes that you have here yeah yeah it also looks like you can get stuck in it if you put your foot basically there well, by accident you shouldn't <laughs> yeah i assume but uh, what's interestingly there's like this emergency escape hatch below me it's around, uh, kind of small, and I think it's for the commander at least, because you can't like lift up the gun, the gun is fixed into this tank, that you can't like lift it up so you can get easily down it. So, I suspect it's rather uncomfortable being that close to the gun, right? Well, it's fixed I think, so it doesn't recoil. Ah! I mean, it's so uh, welded, you can see the welding yeah. spots, so it won't recoil and... Uh, when you sit in the Leopard, you're also very close yeah. to the gun, even when it recoils. Uh, same as a loader, you're standing right next to a recoiling gun, but this gun is fixed, so it shouldn't be a problem. You have also to think about that normally you have your stuff. I mean, where do you put your stuff? Um, when I think about my time, there's some stuff that you can store on the outside because you don't want to get it wet. Sometimes you have like food, uh, drinking and, and so on to stay in the vehicle, to stay operational for some time and uh, you also need to fit it into this vehicle. So there's a big difference in the Leopard, you have a lot of space. I mean, you could put something like here. <laughs> yeah, but it could also go back there and then it's gone, basically. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, one point. But in general, there's a lot of levers and uh, looks like a more mechanic vehicle, because obviously I think it's older. But in general, also to get to this, it's kind of... I mean, with the Leopard, you can easily, when you operate it, you know right next to your head is the stuff that you have to operate. But here, for the laser and stuff like this, it's... Yeah, you have always to lift up your... It's cramped, it's quite cramped. So yeah. You can need to always go and then here and... 
No. Interesting concept, because it's completely... What, what you would prefer, this or a T-72? Depends on the version of the T-72. <laughs> that depends on the version. I mean, there are quite decent versions of T-72, like the track one, the M4, that are quite modern. But this, um, I mean, I'm not used to it. It's a different time. I'm younger than this. And I'm just used to Leopard. It was my first tank I was uh, trained on. And, uh, a Leopard 2, you should add. I mean, if you see like the, the look, the Leopard 1 inside and the Leopard 2 is not uh, that far off because Leopard 1 obviously has this uh, uh, round turret. So you have, don't have like this um, surfaces on the same level like Leopard 2. But uh, like the parts inside looks very similar. And uh, if you are in a Leopard 1, you, you need some time, but you know this is doing this. And So how is this position? Well, um, my knees, I mean, I'm not a big person, to be honest, I'm like 170, but I uh, having problems with my knees hitting here, and I can imagine if you're driving like in rough terrain, that it will cause uh, actually some problems. If there's not like a way to move the seat backwards a bit, no, I mean, here's some sort like a lever, but I can't find any else. Yeah, the steering mechanism looks not very... Oh, yeah, there's an open yeah. chain there. Do you have like an open chain for the reverse driver? Interesting system. But interestingly, as driver, you have a lot of more space, except after for the knees. For the gunner, you have a lot of space for the knees, but here it's, uh, it's constantly uh, hitting. So. I think if you're driving like in rough terrain, I mean, you can like press it so you don't bounce against it. And there's also like this giant void here I could move. I don't know if, if this is used to store something because this looks like, like something where you can mount a radio on. And if you mount here the radio behind this panel, I think it's hard to adjust like frequencies and stuff like this because you can see it or clear malfunctions because sometimes we have problems with radios to have it actually here behind. But it looks like a mounting for, for a radio here, if you ask me. Here with channels for the intercom. But uh, very interesting to see this concept. I'm now on a different side of the vehicle. The, this uh, position has some other dials. I mean, for the I think it's for the commander here. I went uh, below the gun, so I didn't open the hatch. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, it's uh, quite easy to go under the gun. It's not that hard uh, how I expected it. Because if you have to emergency escape the vehicle, you have to do it through the hatch in the front. And uh, don't go out uh, on the top, because normally you get mowed down by a machine gun in this situation. But what I didn't like is like this block behind me. That's like in your back when you're driving with these periscopes. And there's no like, uh, I mean, you have here some levers, but uh, I mean, the command has a lot of more space compared to the other side. I can uh, move way more. I even with my arms, I have more freedom. The hatch looks very small. I mean, extremely small, this one, compared to the uh, giant hatch on the other side. A lot of the vision is actually blocked by the vehicle itself when they look like this. So you have a lot of blind spots inside the vehicle. I mean, obviously you have like this uh, hydraulic system that you can move up and down. But beside of this, a lot of this blocked. So a minor addition here, we just had the luck to run into a former S-Tank platoon commander, platoon chief, and he mentioned, so I asked him of course, what was the platoon size for the S tank? And back then, 50 years ago, when he served, he mentioned it was three tanks. The other very interesting thing that he mentioned is how they fired. They drove, then they aimed, and they fired three shots, one a bit higher, one a bit lower, and one basically what they estimated is the correct range. And so they fired three shots and then immediately reversed and moved out because there was a reverse driver in there and then they changed to a new position. So it was just three shots firing, not watching for a shove all of the shot and just moving back because with the fire, three shots, one a bit lower, one a bit higher, and, and then one in the middle, that the likelihood to hit 
was rather high. And you also catch something, I think, yeah. about driving the water. I was also water. talking about uh, how this vehicle was able to uh, swim with uh, like a cover similar to a boat, like we uh, see on Sherman's during World War II on D-Day. And that this uh, like skirt was mounted around the S-Tank and that the driver actually was standing on top of the vehicle and was uh, controlling it with uh, strings attached to the uh, driver control so he can uh, actually drive it from the outside of the vehicle. So, Tobias, what were your impressions of the S-Tank? First, I have to thank you for this possibility that I can get into this uh, special vehicle that is quite rare on the world. Not many people have seen it, especially not many tank uh, nerds like me have seen it, so I have to thank you and also thank the Panzer Museum Monster to make this possible. My impressions of this vehicle, it's very cramped, very cramped compared to other Western vehicles. The position for the reverse driver is very, very cramped. I had uh, problems with my legs, even when I'm quite small, to be honest. But besides of this, it's like neither comparable with Russian vehicles or Soviet vehicles, nor is it comparable like with a Leopard. It's like a complete different world. It looks different. And I think also the usage is completely different since the gunner is also at the same time the driver. Uh, thank you to Bias for joining us. Uh, thank you to the Panzer Museum Monster for inviting us. Thank you for watching and see you next time.